I think how Google will treat that is as duplicate content because you're not adding, adding anything new to the web. And so once Google identifies that you are just using pure AI, they're going to start to devalue your content, and I think they're going to start to crawl your site. Yes. Yeah, you know, like they're not getting less important because Google's putting these authority sites into the search. So yeah. it seems like maybe more backlinks is what's needed. Eighty percent of them were display ad sites. Okay. That other twenty percent, something else. How was the workshop, guys? Hey, hi guys, I'm Jitin Vasani and I'm sitting with Kali Roof and he's the founder of Paid Optimizer Pro. So Kali, welcome to this interview. And I just want to ask you some, some question. Like your speech was one of the best speech to be very honest in Chiang Mai SEO. Everybody liked it a lot. Like everybody was sharing the positive feedback. Thank you very much. Because you, you are showing actually the case studies like the live one right? and you did some lot of it, some like testing on Google. So how does it work? Like someone who don't know about this, can you share this strategy like for my audience, please? The, the very basic idea is to find SERPs that either don't have any results in them or have very few results in them. And the idea is that once you do that, you can put pages in there that you control. And if you tweak things on those pages, you can start to learn about how the algorithm works without interference from okay. anybody else. Okay, so it's more like like, like clicking the algorithms like, are you or you keep playing with the Google algorithm all the time. That's what you are doing. That's right. Yeah, you kind of get, I get an idea in my head, like, is this a ranking factor or is this stronger than that? Or should I do this? Is it going to be positive? And then within those areas, I can start to tweak pages to see how they perform and, and see if something like is or is not a ranking factor. If this is stronger than that, that sort of thing. And what do you think are the top five ranking factors in 2020 in SEO? What is working right now with all these updates going on right now? Well, the one thing I can tell you in terms of on-page is that the on-page factors that were the most important are still the most most important okay. and the top four are putting uh, your, your uh, keyword in um, the title tag, title the, tag. The, the title that search engine see the h1 that's the mm -hmm. title that humans see and you should only have one h1 on the page and the one h1 on the page right yeah, that's yeah it should be at the top okay. and uh, paragraph tags and in the url and really if you put your keyword just one time in all those places you actually will perform very well for low competition terms. You've done a lot of the SEO you need to do because those are the top places. Okay. Often people try to like overthink it and they want to like get real clever. You know, yes, they, they want yes. to out clever Google and you don't have to do that at all. You really need to get, stick with the basics and then do those extra things on top. And how many H2 tags we should have it? Like, is there any kind of rules? Like if I'm writing like 3000 words of article, is there any kind of rules you have for H2 tags? Like how many times H2 tags has to be there in the article? Like, no, so that you really want to look at because it will change keyword to keyword, niche to niche. Um, okay. I would use a, use any tool that will give you counts. Because you want to give Google the type of page that's expecting to see. Okay. And so any tool that you have that'll tell you, okay, the competitors are using a, a, this type of structure, mm -hmm. that's the type of structure you want to use. Okay. And then I think you just kind of do it a little bit better than what they've done. And what do you think about the AI content? Everybody here is talking about AI content. What do you think about the AI content going to do in 2024? Like So AI content as it is right now is really just duplicate content. They, these are content spinners and they are amazing content spinners, but there's not much difference in my opinion from the content spinners from like 2012, you know, to, to now. It's just that they, they're just fancier. But I think how Google will treat that is as duplicate content because you're not adding, adding anything new to the web. And so once Google identifies that you are just using pure AI, they're going to start to devalue your content and I think they're going to start to crawl your site less. So I don't think you will see like an actual penalty okay. in, in like Search Console, but what I think you'll see that happen is your pages will start to lose value over okay. time, kind of like a panda yeah. effect. And when you kind of see that slow death, I think that's what's going to happen to those pages. So the way to avoid that is the more that you make it unique, the better. Okay. So when you add in like your voice, uh, your own branding, you need to check for facts because it does lie and uh, uniqueness. But also though, in duplicate content, you know, the duplicate content filter. Yeah. Okay. You know, it says like I've removed these results. And you okay. can, so to get past that filter, the page only has to be 51% unique. And so I have a feeling it's going to be very similar with AI. It's not that it has to be completely unique, but probably some threshold like that, where if it's just unique enough, then it's going to get through and you're not going to have any problems. Okay. And what do you think about the anchor text variation? Like if I want to rank for page optimizer pro review example, so what should be my anchor text variation? Like if I want to take backlinks, external or internal links. So can you please share this strategy? Like the only thing that I like to do, which kind of keeps me out of trouble is I like to put in the entire page title as anchor text. Or like music. page or optimizer pro is it worth it example exactly and that, because that's the name of like that's on okay. h1 right mm -hmm. or that's, in, that's, that's in the url yes, right yes. 
that's what I want to use because what happens is, is you get that exact one you want surrounded by maybe some variations of it, yeah. surrounded by contextual terms. Yeah. I do think that Google's looking at everything that's in the clickable text. Okay. I'm not convinced that Google's looking at everything around the link. Around the link. Okay. So if you want to get those terms in that kind of awesome. make sure that Google understands what, where this link is going, what that's it should do, one. how it's involved, get as long as you can, make all that clickable. But then at the same time, it protects you from those anchor text ratio issues mm -hmm. because you're not all exact match all the time. You've just got this longer text going on mm -hmm. and it's a much safer way to do your anchor text. So we can have a variation of it, like title or yeah. maybe general anchor text that click here for re reading the review, right. blah, blah, blah. So right. we can have all these things. Right? That's right. So do you think like, like backlinks will be a major factor, ranking factor in 2024? Because, because in this Google update, like, like the recent one, LinkedIn Pulse, Quora, Reddit, like all the new sites are pushing up, like, mm -hmm. like, like especially like e-com sites are going up to them. How we can outrank these websites without having a backlink? Like? Well, the thing is, the backlinks got them with their DR, right? Okay, all those yes, sites are DR. massive authority, that, you know, and DR isn't like the, I just say that as a general metric. I'm not saying that that's the one you should use, mm -hmm. but you can see that they all are authority sites and oh, they yeah, all have like, so many backlinks coming yeah, in. So, many backlinks. so you, I think if you can say backlinks might be becoming more important. Yes. Yeah, you know, like they're not getting less important because Google's putting these authority sites into the SERP. So yeah. it seems like maybe more backlinks is what's needed. What uh, like impact you had on your sites with this update, like with all these three updates, like major updates. So you also got some kind of impact there, like little bit. The sites that I've seen hit are the, the sites that fall into the category of um, the ones that display ads. Like the display ads, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think. I think of all the sites that hit, I, I feel like 80% of them were display ad sites. Okay. That other 20% something else. And I'm not, I'm not sure what's going on there, but on the ones that have the display ad sites that I have seen, what I've noticed is that when you look at the site in mobile, the ad density, the ad coverage on the pages is, is way high. Okay. All of these people were told by their agency, like the, the platforms that were doing the ads for them, that they kept them at 30% or lower. Okay. And then when you looked at the mobile version of the site, it was like 50, 60% coverage, okay. way, way off. So I think this might fall under the interstitial ads uh, policy that Google has. That you can't have a, a pop-up that covers the entire page. You know, I think that might be an extension of that is what we're seeing. The other pattern that I've seen is that blocking time is in the red. For all. So uh, go to webpagetest.org. It's free oh. to use, put it in and then check out your blocking time. And uh, all the ones that I've seen that been, have been hit had that, that display ad issue and also their blocking time was in the red. Okay. And what do you think SEO is going forward in 2024? Like what changes we can expect from Google now in 2024? Like I do think um, like with the kind of enhanced search results. So you, you're, you're still going to have like your top 10. And then I think around that, we're going to get enhanced results more and more. And those might become more personalized. The Google knows the type of information you want to put out. As SEOs, we're very comfortable with doing this anyway. We use things like SERP works or keywords everywhere. You know, the kind of thing where you click it and it pulls out the data that you want to see. I think it's going to be very similar to that. Google's going to start to personalize the data that it knows you want to see when you are searching. We could take that out and kind of put that into, that, into those areas. Okay. So for me, what that means is that's just another level of optimization. Okay. You know, you optimize first to get in the top 10 and you have to optimize the second time to make sure that the right information is pulled out so somebody will click. Okay. over in that special area. So that's kind of where I see things going. And for me personally, I, I see it as an opportunity for SEOs, not so, not anything to be scared of. So thank you so much. So Kyle, I have some personal question now. Okay. What is the biggest regret you have in your life till now? I, I don't have too many regrets, but, <laughs> but still everybody but, has um, some kind of regrets. Like. So uh, my son, he's eight, almost nine, and okay. we moved to Chiang Mai. I live in Chiang Mai, Thailand. We moved three years ago. I do regret that we didn't move here sooner for him. Okay, so because our yeah. lives are so much better and his life is so much better. The school that he is in now is just a phenomenal school. Wow. That's and we, ha we could have had, had access to that school for him sooner, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I, I regret that a little bit because it, I see how happy he is. The quality of, of the yeah. life is yeah. much better as compared yeah. to the, the US, like so. the school that he would go to in the U S wouldn't be anywhere near, it wasn't anywhere near this. And so how happy he is and how like, he's just, you know, he's learning Thai. Course, you know, and, 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 and so you just, amazing. you just see just how much he's grown and blossomed. And I, and I, the regret I have that we did not come sooner. So what kind of future events we can ex expect from you? Like someone who's watching this video, like, are you doing some kind of events on masterminds? Like, so, uh, I've actually pulled out of a few things that I was going to do in the spring. And that's just because I went a little too hard in 2023 okay. and I need to take a break for myself. Okay, so you know, so we're, uh, we're filming this in November. I'm going to take the winter and spring off. And then the next next event I was going to do is SEO Estonia in, in Estonia. June. 
in yeah. terms of I'm going to do the yeah, yeah. I'm coming there. Like that was the best. It, it was a pretty good conference, yeah, right? <laughs> I was there. Like I was in the mastermind. I got a good value from there. Like two, yeah. three people. Like it's like you need like two or three connections and that's you get the need. ROI. So that's, that's all you need. You cannot need hundred people for sure. Like right. and like well, it was you, very small. You get around. You can. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have a good energy now. But that's what most I, humans cannot. <laughs> yes. Because I don't drink alcohol, Mars. You know, I focus more on that working part. That's but, where that might be my mistake. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But thank you so much Kyle for giving me your time if, like if you like this video please share like uh, and and make sure you follow Kylie Roof on social media he's one of the famous legends here in SEO thank you so much Kyle thank you, you for your time bye bye take care guys bye bye